98 FM. Now, that's what I call sport podcast. Wes Houlihan, how are you? Yeah, Grant, not too bad. Now, Wes is sitting in a departure lounge after finishing off the season with Norwich. Norwich City Player of the Year. Wes, where are you off on the old Holliers? Uh, I'm going to uh, Dubai for uh, 10 days with the family. Just going to spend some like downtime and relax and um, obviously, you know, enjoy it and then obviously get back with the Irish team. Yes, indeed. Of course, getting ready for a big World Cup qualifier against Austria coming up in June and a couple of friendlies as well. Wes, before we speak about Ireland, let's talk a little bit um, about your season at Norwich. Uh, just finished off with a good 4-0 win over QPR at the weekend. Uh, two goals for yourself, sir, and uh, named Player of the Year. So, not a, a bad end to finish the season, although I know you guys wanted to try and bounce back to the Premier League the first time asking. Yeah, of course. You know, it was, um, you know to be honest, probably a disappointing season because we were favourites to go up and... Um, you know, obviously it's disappointing that we didn't, but um, at the end it was a good season to get player of the year and um, obviously to score uh, two goals in the last game. And obviously, you know, we just need to build on that uh, next season. You know, obviously there's a lot of players let go and uh, hopefully we can bring in uh, a lot of uh, players coming in through about six or seven to uh, hopefully get us back into the Premier League. Yes, Wes, you've scored some amazing goals this season. As we mentioned, two goals against QPR. That volley against Nottingham Forest, half volley, 30 yards out or so. An absolute cracker, sir. You pulled it off. Yeah, it was a nice feeling, you know, when you see it, uh, when you think about it before it comes to you, you're seeing that the keeper's off his line and, uh, you know, just to try it and, uh, you know, sometimes either end up in Rose Ed or in the back of the net and uh, lucky enough it was the latter. I think it's probably fair to say that's something, Wes, that you've always been confident enough to try those bits of skill and I know you're a street footballer and you played on the street in Dublin for years and years and it's probably fair to say when you go onto a professional football pitch, those habits stay with you. Yeah, of course. You know, in training, you try these things. And, uh, you know, obviously when I'm playing in the park, by the side and stuff like that, you, you try them things because you don't get um, you don't get slaughtered if you don't come off. And uh, But it was nice that it worked out. Sometimes it don't, but it was lovely that it did work out. You know, Johnny Housen before that got an unbelievable goal of the season before that. And it was nice to probably uh, get, get the second best goal of the day, you know. Yes, indeed, Wes. Eight in the championship, 10 points off the playoffs. You ended up um, having been relegated last season I mean we've seen a lot how difficult it is to bounce straight back and people like Sunderland will face that now next season you were the joint top scorers in the league though with 85 goals what do you put it down to that I, I know you can see quite a few that you just weren't able to to do what Newcastle did and bounce back for the first time of asking yeah obviously we did it a couple of years back but this year um, you know I think it was sometimes lack of um, just mistakes and concentration you know I think in games where we look like we we're going to go on and win or we we're coming back into the game we either got a man sent off you know a lot of things didn't go our way at, at times but obviously we can't just uh, blame that for it we just at the end of the day we weren't good enough as uh, a whole squad and um, you know it was, it was disappointing but you know listen we have a great squad of players hopefully we can keep the majority of them and uh, hopefully just add one or two more additions to the, to the squad and hopefully we can uh, push on. On the championship overall, uh, 46 games, it looks like Saturday, Tuesday, most weeks. What's it actually like for a footballer to have to play such competitive games? And even for a player like yourself, it's a, a rough and tumble league with lots of physical players looking to kick you when you get on the ball in that area of the pitch. It must be quite tough to be playing so many games in sh- such a short period of time. Yeah, obviously, you know, championship is one of the most demanding leagues in uh, in Europe. It's uh, week in, week out, you know, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, especially with cup games as well. But, uh, you know, players seem to enjoy that more than actually training all week. You know, games come around thick and fast. It's either a good side or a, or a bad side. You know, if you're winning games, then you, you want to come Saturday, Tuesday. But obviously, if you're losing, then obviously you want to... Um, you want to come kind of week-to-week games. Well, speaking of goals, I was in the stadium and... Euro 2016, that volley, or the goal, should I say, anyway, against Sweden. Um, talk us through it and your memories of it. It's a famous goal. Obviously, we ended up getting to the last 16, beaten by France on that roast and hot day. But a great memory to, to score that goal and a fantastic photo of just the emotion on your face when you were running off to celebrate. Yeah, of course. It's one of those uh, surreal moments. You know, you dream of those scoring in the Euros and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, my first game in it, it was a great run down the line by uh, Seamus and uh, he managed to cut it back. And I uh, just managed to cut it sweetly with my right foot. And, uh, you know, it was uh, a moment to save it. Yes. Now, of course, uh, this could be a, a silly question, Wes. But I noticed when you scored that goal and you celebrated, there was a chain on you. Is that a, a medical chain or were you a bold boy? And did you wear a, a chain and, and manage to hide it from the lines, man? No, it was, um, we got uh, all but got a holy medal in uh, Cork. And uh, we all got one and I managed to put it around my neck. And, uh, you know, most of the lads had one on and stuff like that. And uh, I just I just thought we were, um, I managed to get away with it. But uh, I think when I was going on the pitch against France, they managed to spot it and they ended up taking it off me. <laughs> oh, that's why we lost, so, uh, Wes. It's all about the chain, <laughs> the lucky chain, huh? <laughs> you know what I mean? 
if that I bring that holy medal on the pitch, maybe I had a chance of winning. Yes, indeed. Uh, as we said, Reg, you're heading off now for your holidays in Dubai for 10 days, but uh, some big games coming up for Ireland. We've got the friendlies against Mexico and Uruguay, the Mexican game in New York, and then the big World Cup qualifier against Austria. And all the players are now on the same boat, bar the Premier League boys who, who finish a little bit later than you. How do you keep yourself in, in shape now, for example, on your holidays? Will you have to be out for the odd run on the beach or in the gym to keep yourself when, when you come back in for, for the Ireland camp as well? Yeah, you need to obviously take over. You know, our last game was last Sunday, so I, I managed to um, probably not do that for four or five days and probably then uh, kind of go back into the gym there when I'm over here and just kind of uh, keep up my fitness work. Obviously, we meet up there in Cork in a few weeks and um, obviously get back into into it and uh, look forward to the games coming up. Yeah, what's the expectations heading into June, Wes? The two friendlies, of of course, and I'm sure it's nice to, to go and play in New York. The last time Ireland played there against Spain, I was I was at the match and it was a great occasion, but I'm sure everything is, is gearing towards that massive match against Austria. Yeah, obviously, these two games will uh, prep as well for the uh, Austria game. Um, obviously, the Championship boys will uh, play probably in New York and then obviously wait. Uh, the Premier League boys only up then in Dublin and play uh, the second game. But obviously, all the two games will uh, prep us uh, well for the, the qualifier. Yeah, whereas you were injured, of course, for um, the Welsh match, and I'm not sure if you were at the game already, you watched it on, on TV, but everybody, I'm sure, is raring to get back on the pitch, and a win against Austria would really set things up nicely heading into the, the final couple of games, but a win for Austria, on the other hand, would, would open things right up again, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course. You know, the game in Wales, uh, we were great. You know, um, fortunately, we can get the goal, but it was a great uh, draw. And, um, you know, going into this game, we get a win. We're in, um, we're in a strong position, but we know it's going to be a tough game. Austria, we played them away from home and they were very good, very physical. And, uh, but hopefully we can, um, hopefully we can get a, a good win. Yes, Wes, just a, a final couple of ones on yourself personally. We mentioned the, the street football earlier on and I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about your own career and your rise from uh, playing for Belvedere for 10 or 12 years in, in Dublin, moving to Shells, then over to Scotland with Livingston, Blackpool and now I think over 300 games with Norwich um, since you signed for them in 2008. Just talk me through that, that street football in you and unfortunately now in, in Dublin, like even all week it's been so sunny out and you just don't see kids on the road playing football anymore. Yeah, I know. It's a shame, you know. I was just talking to my dad uh, during the week about it. That there's not many people now on the streets playing football. When I was growing up, there was hundreds of us on the streets all so wanted to play five-a-side football. We'd put their coats down and make goals out of it. And, uh, you know, play um, your goal, you're out and stuff like that. And, um, you know, that's where I learned to play, you know, my football more or less. And, uh, you know, then play for Belleville yeah, from 8 to 18. You know, in Fairview Park. Uh, had great memories there. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, nowadays it's hard to kind of like find people on the streets playing football. That's all probably more or less coaching and stuff like that. Yeah, the jumpers for goalposts is a famous phrase. I think there's a book written about that too. And um, it just doesn't happen anymore. Is that down to just kids these days with iPads and Netflix and Sky Sports that they're just not out playing sport anymore? Yeah, maybe. You know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, entertainment now with the iPads, the iPhones, and uh, et cetera. And, uh, you know, less into watching uh, films and, uh, and sitting at home than rather being outside and playing. I'm sure you probably couldn't count how many hours you spent on the street, Wes, but when you combine that with your time at Belvo and being encouraged to play the right way, I think that's stood to you now in, in the way that you play football. Like I was even looking at some highlights on YouTube of, of some of your goals that Norwich put up when you were named Player of the Year and some of the passes and some of the crosses, none more so than the goal for Robbie at the Euros uh, against Italy as well. They're all things that you just did for years and years and hours and hours on the streets. Yeah, it's all I'd say, like it's all about practicing and uh, you know being spending the hours on the training pitch and uh, you know working hard. That's the main thing, really. And uh, you know I still follow. Yes, Wes, you've played over three hundred games now for Norwich. You're, I think, you've got one year left on your contract. I know you spoke to Dan McDonald and the Irish Independent about wanting to stay at the club. Your family are settled there as well. Um, currently, there's no full time manager. Alan Irvine was in caretaker charge. What's your, your own hopes and, and ambitions for for Norwich for next season from a personal point of view? Yeah, I'm hoping, obviously, you know, uh, speaking to Stuart Webber, he's going to obviously look at uh, the coach that's going to come in and um, look have a uh, few new ideas and, uh, you know, have one season left. And that will be my 10th year. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's going to be a, a challenge. You know, we've got a lot of uh, talented players there now in my position, like Pritchard and James Madison. But, uh, you know, I'm going to look forward to, um, to obviously, to this year and hopefully, um, you know, get, get us promoted in my 10th season. Yeah, it's something that we don't really think about too much is, 
you know, off the pitch and how settled yourself and, you know, your partner and your kids and your family are. And you've been there for 10 years now. And I know we're hoping to speak to John O'Shea next week and, and you know, with him and Sunderland and his own family are settled too. And that's an, an aspect of every football player's decision-making process now, particularly at your age when you're coming to the end, is that your, your family and, and everybody there is settled in the area too. Yeah, of course. You know, Norwich is a beautiful place to live. You know, you're right near the beach and stuff like that. And uh, it's really enjoyable. And the family settled well there. And uh, they enjoy it. So, you know, they've been here 10 years now. So, um, you know, it's a great place to bring them up. When you do retire, Wes, will you stay living there? Or do you plan to come back to Dublin? Or do you know yet? Um, I haven't decided yet. We don't know yet, obviously. You know, we'll see how, how it goes. But more, probably more than likely, we'll probably end up staying in Norwich. Wes, final two questions. I popped it up last night on Twitter when I knew I was going to be speaking to you. If people wanted to, to ask you any questions. Uh, one from Gary Burke, who's another former Belvo star, played in the number 10 role, played for Belvo for about 10 years as well. He wants to know, who is the best player you've ever played with and why? Um, best player I've played with was... Um, let me see, probably Robbie Brady, obviously, where, uh, because I've uh, played one with Norwich, you know, he's got a great left foot, you know, he can play in a number of positions, left wing, probably number 10 and left back, so he was uh, one of the best players I've played with. Yeah, he's so good, isn't he? I spoke to him a couple yeah, of months ago at brilliant. the at, at the international awards, and um, apart from his ability, is, is he can play in any position. And that left foot, Wes, we talk about you and practice on the street. Robbie was the same, yeah. playing for St. Kevin's in and around the stuff. He's he, he's a huge talent and, and probably only going to get better, isn't he? Yeah, he's only a bit. He's still only twenty four, twenty five, so he's still got a lot, a lot more ability, a lot more to come. You know, he's naturally a left foot. You know, from set pieces, he's always going to be a danger, and uh, to have that uh, wonderful left foot like he has, it's uh, you know, it's great. And the last one from a League of Ireland fan called Liam Ward, who says, "I want to ask Wes, when is he coming home to talk a park to show Duffer and Steve McPhail how it's done?" Of course, uh, Damien Duff and, and Steve McPhail, two uh, uh, former Ireland players as well, came back and played for a little bit of Shamrock Rovers, and they're now in a coaching mm-hmm. capacity. Wes, do you ever see yourself uh, pulling on a League of Ireland jersey again? Ah, who knows? You know, obviously, I had great times at uh, Shelbourne. Uh, you know, one of my best memories. You know, winning the the leagues and uh, playing the cups, and just you know, enjoying myself there. So you never know, you know, if I was ever going to come back, I'd probably, you know, I'd probably love to play for Shells again, maybe, you know, but uh, you never know, you never know. The Shells fans would love that because they've had some hard times in the last number of years, Wes. I'm not sure if you keep an eye on them, but uh, it's a little yeah, bit sad what's happened yeah. to them. Yeah, it's sad, you know, obviously when we, we were there, we have got a, had a great squad, you know, playing Champions League football in the Europa League, winning league medals and stuff like that. But now I know they're in Division 1 and not doing too well. But it, it's sad to see because... Uh, people down there they're all they're all brilliant you know they work so hard for the club that is the voice of Ireland and Norwich attacker Wes Hulham Wes thanks a million for your time enjoy the holidays in Dubai and the best of luck in that big game for Ireland against Austria in June thanks Wes no worries Jamie thanks very much see you then 98 FM's now that's what I call sport back live this Sunday morning from 9 98 FM